So welcome to the restoration of uh, Tech 549. Um, I've done this about two years ago. I uh, wrote a blog back in the day, but I never got the time to put up a proper video. So I thought I'll just uh, quickly run through some of the uh, photos I have and give you a running commentary on what uh, was done to bring it back to life. And before I proceed, uh, I just want to warn you, do not open one of these things up unless you're familiar with vacuum tube electronics and really knows the safety precautions behind working with high voltage uh, gear. So be careful. This is the quick spec. Um, if you're working on one of the vintage tectonic scope or not even vintage, even if you're looking into or working on one of the uh, scopes from 80s and late 90s, uh, the number one source for all the information is TechWiki. There's a huge, huge amount of information available about all the scopes and other instruments or technically any any tech uh, instrument in the past that are there, uh, including manuals, high quality manuals and, um, you know, tips about general problems and um, photos and other reference stuff. So make sure you check this out first uh, in case if you are trying to work on one of uh, these oscilloscopes or other tech instruments. Uh, as like many of these uh, scopes, you know, it, you kind of find these thing in pretty bad shape, uh, pretty used up, uh, you know. And after restoration, this is how it shows up. You know, they all come back to life. Uh, it, it looks really brand new. Um, and works fantastic. It's a analog storage oscilloscope, so you can see the buttons for uh, storing the waveform and erasing it. This is uh, the days where uh, there was no DSP or memories to store the waveform in the chip. And this is how it sounds when it really works because of the huge fan behind it. So generally when I get one of these things, I kind of go through a complete uh, inspection of it, a detailed inspection to see what is inside, what is bad, what is potentially visibly, you know, messed up. And there is always quite a lot of dust, debris, you know, all sort of animals and, uh, you know, insects, whatnot. You can find everything inside. And plus sometimes even you get to see burnt components. And uh, in some rare cases, you can even find uh, foreign objects and stuff like that say for example the screws which were you know fell into it or uh, washers and stuff like that which were misplaced by someone else who wasn't there before uh, these things you know kind of help with the whole troubleshooting because you don't want to blow something up just because there was a screw or a washer sitting inside and short circuiting the connections I kind of clean the unit completely before I do anything because I do, I hate to work on an instrument which is dirty and has got dust in it. So as much as possible, I disassemble it into pieces um, and uh, clean every part as much as I can. I take out every, every tube and clean all the tubes as well. Uh, but make sure you don't wipe the markings out if you're trying to clean the tubes. Um, and then I put things back together. I even remove the knobs because typically the knobs contains a whole lot of uh, dust and uh, you know mud accumulated in the grooves. Um, in some cases I even remove the CRT but I haven't removed the CRT in this model. And um, then I put it together and start testing it or start troubleshooting it to see how far it comes back to life. And as you can see once you clean it the whole unit looks much much better you know it, it gives you some sort of or at least for me it gives me a positive inspiration to work on it and fix it and the panels I clean the panels as well take it out and completely wash them so that there is no mud inside it while cleaning internals uh, be careful uh, you know not to wipe out the markings on the panels also doing a detailed cleaning gives you an opportunity to find out if there is something very obvious which you should be fixing like leads which are shorting 
Oh, by the way, this is the output tubes, tubes, the vertical output tubes, 8608s. Uh, it's mounted very next to the CRT deflection plates. Uh, this is the vertical amplifier section. that's the inside uh, what you see straight down is a power supply and you can see how dirty the power supply tubes are and uh, once you clean it up this is how it looks and hinge open which is hinged is the time base b plus uh, the delay time base or the circuitry for the delay time base as you can see i was cleaning one of the 6a06 in the power supply you know came broke loose so plus you can see the vr tube is gassy uh, that's the primary reference for the entire power supply unit. And this is how it looks after cleaning. So I'm trying to put things back one by one, like the power supply, um, the, the knobs, the fan grill, Now, this was my first project, so I just want to be really safe. So I disconnected all the plate voltage uh, windings and just kept only the heater because I was not sure in what state this whole oscilloscope was. So I, I disconnected every plate winding and just kept only the heater and powered up the unit um, just to see if all the tubes are alive. Um, and uh, you know it was always also a warm-up exercise to uh, make sure that if there is any moisture in any of the connectors or you know sockets out of the cleaning process i wanted to you know get that dry as well so i kept the unit with heater for uh, you know some time and then i started looking at the recapping you know unfortunately i i did recapping i did not um, reform uh, because i didn't have the know-how or uh, the infrastructure or the instrument to do the proper re reforming those days so it was a bit ugly, you know, I want to go back and fix it. The rest of the capacitors, I had to crack open some of them to see if they are paper or, you know, some sort of a plastic type or non-paper type, I would say. And then I tested all the tubes. Um, when I say testing again, I just look for uh, shorts and i see if the tubes are uh, you know um what do you say behaving to the bare minimum you know i'm not gonna do any regress uh, very aggressive testing for uh, you know transconductance or any other stuff fundamentally i look forward for a tube which is not shorted or leaky now in that process i found a bunch of tubes which were bad i found a 6l6 which was dead found a 6dj8 which was shorted and um of course, the VR tube was bad and there was a 6A6 in the power supply that was also broken. So, replace all the tubes and then I powered it up. And uh, the first trace was a bit funny. There were a uh, couple of ceramics capacitors which kind of smoked out. Um, I, I don't know why, but maybe they were bad or they had moisture in them. And... Um, that was the first funny trace out of this. Uh, it was really narrow. It was not wide enough. And then I was doing an overall scan around the uh, ceramic strip to see if every component is good. And I figured out the R136 was just absolutely hot and it was almost a water smoke. And uh, I started looking around and found that the tube which I replaced is blown again. And that was a little bit uh, surprising for me because I was not sure what was going on. And this is one thing which took me a really long time to figure out what was going on. Um, apparently, the whole thing was caused by a zener in the unblanketing circuit of the CRT. Um, that zener was short, which was sending a minus 150 all the way back into the sweep circuit, messing everything up there. So it took me a couple of weeks to figure that out. Because I was new to the whole uh, unit, I was new to the tech scopes, so you know, it was not that easy for me. So if you look at the schematic, you can see that the cathode followers are supposed to have um, 
grid of 40 to 94 and uh, cathode of 45 to 95 now since the zener was shorted out the grid was staying still at plus 45 but the cathode went all the way down to minus 150 which was of course uh, frying the tube and everything around it now since this was a disaster i started looking further because this could cause potentially more trouble in the whole uh, oscilloscope and um, there was indeed other tubes which were burned as well as the resistors which were used in the decoupling network were burned as well uh, decoupling network for those respective tubes so it's so hidden deep underneath this you know jungle of components you have to lift the respective upper layer of components to see what exactly is going on i've given a detailed um, description of which components to watch out for and the reference schematic in my blog so this Zener basically killed the cathode followers at both the time base and the power supply for them and um, <clears throat> that's actually the map on the time base B where it was uh, you know affecting the whole thing like again you need to lift the upper layer components to see the damage on the components underneath the the ceramic strip so I've replaced all these, uh, the Zener diode, the tubes and um, the resistors and the scope is back. It is good, but the sweep is not linear. If you carefully watch, the sweep is kind of, you know, compressed in one side. Now this is rather something simple to troubleshoot and fix because if you look at the horizontal amplifier section there is a big 0.5 microfarad 400 volt capacitor sitting there by the look of it i thought maybe it's a you know non-paper capacitor i kind of let it sit there but after having this issue i pulled it out and tested and uh, it was indeed badly leaking and that's what caused it now that capacitor is a pretty interesting one uh, it sits in the horizontal amplifier and gets the pulse from the power supply power on. So it takes the minus 150 volt rail, the pulse from the minus 150 volt power supply rail and pushes it into a RC network sitting inside or sitting in the grid of the horizontal amplifier, which is marked here. The reason is with the scope powers up, they want to steer the beam away from the main phosphor or the screen area to avoid the screen burn because when the whole scope is powering up for the first time uh, all the stages are initializing and you may not have the right voltages and deflection which might potentially cause the beam to be quite strong and cause phosphor burn so they use the pulse from the minus 150 volt power on to charge an RC network which completely drags the grid of your horizontal amplifier causing the whole beam to be steered away from the screen until the entire uh, scope warms up. So once the RC network charges, it, it's going to start discharging because you get only the power on pulse and the power supply is on after that. So once the RC circuit discharges, it slowly returns the trace back to the screen. I was playing around with the scope uh, for some more time and I noticed this issue where I switch or when I switch from time base A to B the trace is jumping up and down in the screen or rather the the DC level is not maintained when I switch from time base A to time base B and that turned out to be a specific diode in the sweep circuit um, which was uh, not easy to find out but since the schematic has got all the DC reference voltages for each section you know you can kind of trace it and figure out where it's different and try to you know troubleshoot the component around that and fix it and that was it everything came back to life and normal and even the storage function is working beautifully um, i'll probably do another video on how exactly to use the scope especially in terms of the storage functions and um, uh, some of this some of the other features like delayed sweep thank you for watching